Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron. This is Scott. And today we're continuing our questions and answers. So we've done two episodes already. Uh, Scott and I spoke at a youth event uh, in Alabama. And during that um, weekend on Saturday, we did two different panel sessions where they were able to submit questions. And so we had two 40-minute panel sessions. The first session, they submitted four questions and we answered those. And then between the first and second, they submitted 30 more <laughs> And so we yeah, were like, it was a bit. we started off by saying, just a heads up, we're not going to get a chance to answer all your questions. And then we sort of on the spot, were like, you know what, why don't we just do a podcast yeah, episode, episode where we answer the rest of these questions. So if you went to that conference, you may have had to wait a month or so until the episodes drop, but we're going to go through and continue through that question list. So uh, if you asked a question and you're watching these episodes and your question didn't get answered, there's two or three that we skipped. Uh, mainly there were some like, I guess, appropriate ones we answered in that session that we're not answering here. But anyway. Right. They're they're more personal, the more yeah. specific. Yeah, exactly. All right. First one. Scott, how do you talk about the Bible to people that have a different religion? How would you do that yourself? Well, you, I mean, first of all, you got to understand that you're not going to talk about the Bible unless you talk about religion. So you got to ask people about what they believe. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you believe about this life, the next one, religiously? You got to broach the, the conversation. So you can ask them what they believe. Just ask them, hey, you know, yeah. how are you? Having a good day? Maybe you're at the coffee shop like you are all the yeah. time. You know, what are you What are you doing? You know, I'm over here studying this. What do you believe? Whatever. Just just ask. I, yeah. mean, the, I guess the worst is they might be a little rude to you. Yeah. And you move on with your life. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've said this before. My dad taught me that people always like conversations if they're the ones doing all the talking. Yeah, that's true too. And more so, more questions you ask, open-ended questions, more. Yeah, people like to, you know, feel like people care about them, like yeah. they care, like they're interested in them. Yeah. Right. So, and I think that's why, you know, like whenever I meet somebody who's now, this would be, you know, not. Um, let's start with like a Mormon, Jehovah's Witness. I normally ask them like, so how how'd you end up at the? How'd you end up in this this position, thinking this is right? You know, like explain to me. You know. Yeah. And I'm genuinely interested because. Number one, you're getting to know that person. You are trying to get to know that person. Yeah, you you're going you're trying to talk to them about the scriptures, but I mean that's this the natural way, right? That's how yeah. you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you just just yeah. agree. No, I agree yeah, I agree. You. Yeah. Um and it's the same thing when I'm talking with somebody, you know, that is, you know, Muslim or I remember, you know, in a um a taxi cab in Chicago, I think I was at. Uh flew in and was in a taxi. And the guy had something uh, sitting up front. I think it was it was something hanging from, I can't remember what it was, but it was something that made me think, okay, I think this guy's Muslim. And so I just asked him, I was like, hey, what's that hanging from your, you know, rear view mirror? And he told me and, and uh, I said, oh, neat. And I said, so, you know, are, you know, are you Muslim? And he said, yeah. I said, so tell me like, what's your story? How did you, like, how'd you come to that conclusion? Like, I'm curious. I am genuinely curious. Yeah. Because number one, we should always be curious that we're following the truth, which I believe we are, you know, if you're a Christian, but it always opens up the door as opposed to saying like, Oh, you're Muslim. Can I tell you why I think you're wrong? Like that just shuts the door immediately. And I think it's easier to say, Hey, tell me how you came to that conclusion. And that starts a conversation. It also gives you more information. You know, when I meet anybody to have a Bible study with them, um, whether it's a Mormon or whether it's someone who I don't even know if they have any religion or if they're irreligious, the first thing I normally ask them is like, you know, so tell me your story. Like, where are you from? You know, when I start a Bible study, Hey, tell me where you're from. Like, Tell me your story. And almost everyone, since they know, if they know who I am, like that I'm involved in like, you know, religious, I'm a Christian, they almost always feel like, oh, well, this is a part of what he wants to know. So they'll tell me, well, you know, I grew up and I was, you know, my parents never took me to church or my parents took me, we were Catholic or we were Baptist. And like, they tell you there's their story. And then number one, it gives you a lot of information on, okay, maybe how much they know, what they don't know about, like, it's great. It's yes. great to know because the yes. way that you're going to approach someone, let's say you're talking to somebody who's a member of the Islam faith, yeah. you know, whatever you want to say, yeah. Muslim. I, yeah. I forget. That's how right. You, Not the same way. Best way to say it, yeah. right? Islam. And you're the talking person, to them. Yeah. That person has decided to convert to Islam. You find out in the conversation, how do you know, tell me about yourself, where you're yes. from, would you believe all that? That's going to be way different than a conversation with somebody who's like, yeah, you know, I was raised here. My parents are this and this is what I am. But, you yep. know, I, I go like a few times a year or what? That's a yep. different scenario. So it's a good tool to find out those kind of things, how you need to approach the person. Well, it's like a doctor. I yeah. mean, when you, when you, if you yeah. were a doctor, just yeah. put yourself in the position of a doctor and you have a patient, like, how do you know what to address? You don't until they tell you what's wrong, unless you're just a really bad doctor, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. Like we've talked about some bad doctors that you have an issue and they don't even ask you about it. They're just like, go see this person, this person, right? Man, I That's know a bad doctor. It. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. You know about that. So yeah, the first thing as far as how to talk to somebody is talk to them about them. Ask them where they're from, you know, what their background is. Like I always say, just tell me your story. Yeah. Because number one, I, I'm curious. I like listening to and different people. And it's peop- also good because you find out what they care about the most yeah. because they're going to be the one who's choosing what parts of themselves to reveal. So they're going to grab the things that they feel are the most appropriate and that they're the most proud of, or the happiest to share. Right. Yeah. So that's good too. Absolutely. You, you'll have the things to lean into. You already, you already know some of their interests. That's right. So it gives you a good place to start. Yeah. So just ask them about them. Yeah. Okay. Next question. This one is how do you keep from getting discouraged when a Christian that you admire sins loses faith or falls away or just in general disappoints you. So we can kind of break that down. So the overall question is how do you keep from getting discouraged when someone you look up to spiritually, a Christian? Well, let's talk about when they sin, right? So they said sins, loses faith or falls away, which is the same thing, or just in general disappoints you. So let's talk about first when a Christian you admire sins. All right. What would you say? (laughs) Expect it. That's what I would say. How do I keep from getting discouraged? Yeah, I should expect it. You should expect it. That was one of the first things, I think, maybe even the first few weeks I was a Christian, someone told me uh, as a member of the church, and they said, listen, don't be discouraged when we let you down because we will let you down. At some point, we're going to fail you. We're going to do the wrong thing. We're going to let you down. People. That just That's not the point. Yeah. So that was an early just piece of advice from an— from an, an, an older Christian woman there. And it was good advice. That's that's what I've kept in mind. Yes. I'm going to be disappointed in the behavior of my brethren. And, yeah. and they're going to be disappointed in mine sometimes, yeah. if I'm being honest. Yeah. Well, this is what First John says. So First John chapter 1, verse 7. If we walk in, it's written to Christians. If we walk in the light, right, manner of living. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us. Uh, from all sin, present tense. So while you're walking, faithfully walking, following God, your manner of life, uh, you have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ cleanses you from your sins. Okay, you're going to repent as forgiveness, God cleanses. Now look at verse eight. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and what? The truth is not in us. Verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a what? A liar and his word is not in us. Uh, so basically what you have here is he says, if you, I mean, there's there's more, but I guess I could stop there. Um, oh, yeah, I'll just stop there. I'm not going to keep reading. Uh, you can keep reading if you want to go read yourself first, John. I read to the end of chapter one. You can start into chapter two. Yeah. Um, what you have here is you have this overall arching thing is that if you're a Christian, Christians do what? They sin. And if someone says that I don't sin, you're a liar, right? And so the overall thing is you should expect, not like expect someone to do it all the time. Like it's not like you expect it, like no big deal. But what you're saying is it's going to happen. Like Christians are going to sin. Guess what? Newsflash, Scott and I sin. Yeah, right? it's, it's not the point is really the the, the answer, right? Like, like what I mean is. Well, I'm getting to the end. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm working my way there. Sorry. Yeah, no. You go ahead. So go yeah. Ahead. So how do you keep from getting discouraged when someone you admire sins? Of course, it depends on the type of sin, right? So if it's like what we would call, and I would say the Bible does say they're greater sins, right? Each one can, one sin will cause you to be lost, you know? Yes. But like, you know, if I'm just trying to, let's say that you're driving down the road and you're going the speed limit and I pass you and, and you're like, hey, Aaron's speeding. It's like, okay, that's something. Now you're going to hope that Aaron's going to say like, oh, I didn't realize that. I'm going to slow down. Lord, my bad. I'm trying to keep the laws of land, et cetera, right? Yeah. Now, if you find out that I do some like, you know, I am stealing money from the church that I go to. Like, that's a big, that's a bigger deal, right? How do you keep from getting discouraged, right? Number one, your faith should always be first and foremost in who? The Lord. The Lord. Yes. That's that. That's it. The faith in me is not going to save you. That's right. I am a Christian because I'm a follower of Jesus. Now, Paul, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Right. But if your faith is in Jesus, like, when somebody in your local congregation disappoints you, this is a question. How do you keep from getting discouraged when a Christian you admire sins or in general disappoints you? Yeah, if you have somebody you look up to, it's okay to look up to somebody, but make sure you don't put too much faith in that person because that person's not the Lord. They're not your model. They're they not can your be model. An encouragement. That's right. As they you follow can learn Christ, from them. that's right. They can mentor you, but it's like he said, like in so much as I am following Christ, that's what you follow. 
That's, that's the right. idea. That's the point, right? Yeah. And, and, and I think this is really important for many reasons. Number one, um, a lot of times people do put their faith in a person. And so let's say you put your faith in a preacher or in an elder or in, you know, a teacher that you really admire, or you put your faith in somebody that is a human and then they sin and you say like, well, you know, I, I just can't believe this. I'm leaving the church. Stop it. You were, you should never have been a member of the church because of anybody like South Haven. If frankly, if, if that's the honest truth, you're probably not anyway. I yeah. Mean, you, well, so you should, yeah. you, your faith should always be in Jesus. That's right? right. So whenever someone at your church disappoints you, well, guess what? You weren't there for them. You that's were there right. for who? Jesus. You need to be there for the Lord. That's right. You're a member of the church of Jesus. That's right. His the church of Christ, bride. the church of God, whatever you, name you yeah. want to use. That's his bride, right? That's right. So the reason you're there is because you're there on Sunday and Wednesday to worship Jesus, not to worship people around you. Now, that doesn't mean it won't hurt your feelings. And that doesn't mean that like if someone stabs me in the back, it's it's a good it's, it's still a bad feeling because it's supposed to be your brother that looks out for you. You can your become sister. very discouraged by your brother. I mean, I guess in a sense... There had to be frustration and discouragement with Paul and, and John Mark in that scenario in Acts. Yes. So, I mean, you can become frustrated or discouraged and disappointed, but what you can do is decide to give up or let that stop exactly. you from being faithful. Let it stop the work. Let it cause disunity and division and yes. all that. Yes. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to how do you keep from getting discouraged? I mean, you're going to get discouraged when somebody harms you. But what I'm saying is don't let that discouragement get to such a level that you leave the church. Yeah. And I'm not even trying to say, by the way, that the Jean Mark thing was a sin issue. I know that that's the question. Well, I think you point that out. I think you can be, I I don't know. I think you could be discouraged. By something that's not a sin. Yeah. I I do too. I agree with that. What I mean is like our question was when a Christian, you admire sins. Sure. I didn't mean to imply that necessarily Barnabas or Jean Mark sinned. Sure. Anyway, I wasn't trying to say that too sure. much. I didn't. I, I didn't get that from that. But I know. Cool. But that's and, good. You know, to clarify I'm self conscious about a lot. That's of that good. Stuff. That's good. I mean, that's I, if I made this day, maybe I would have been. But yeah. so yeah, how do you keep from getting discouraged when someone you admire sins or loses the faith or falls away? Remember this: your ultimate faith should be in Jesus. Um, if your faith was in Peter, would you have been disappointed? Yeah, and Peter was an apostle. If your faith was in was in Paul, would you have been disappointed? Probably at times. Right. Yeah. If your faith was, I mean, I'm trying to think of like who's the most. And I suppose, in a way, Paul was addressing Peter because it, his behavior would have been discouraging and disappointing. Oh, and in Galatians too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Paul Absolutely. was. He was. He Absolutely. was rebuking Peter. So yeah. I'm sure Paul was discouraged in that. He wasn't encouraged. Yeah, you were probably thinking of Peter denying Christ, right? When you were talking about that a second ago. But yes. Yeah. I yeah. Got you. Yeah. I was thinking of Peter denying Christ. I got you. That would be discouraging, right? Yes. When Paul, be. whenever Paul rebuked Peter to his face, that wouldn't have been encouraging for Paul. It'd be discouraging, no. but Paul didn't allow it to cause him to leave the faith because his faith wasn't in Peter. It was in Jesus. Absolutely. So just keep that in mind. You know, when someone disappoints you or falls away, you know, don't think that that's an excuse to leave the church. What was John's instructions to Gaius? And Diotrephes, that situation. Third that John. Third John. Yeah. I mean, what about that? Was Gaius discouraged? That whole book is written to encourage Gaius because Diotrephes was sinning. Yeah. In the church. There's the answer. Yeah. What do I do when I'm discouraged when another Christian sins? Read Third yeah. John and do that. Well, when another I mean, per- when another basically that's sorry, go ahead. When another person in the church sins, the, we have other instructions to go to that person. Well, Matthew. that's true too. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. That's no, you're right. Yeah. You got to try to approach them and deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So Matthew 18, you know, would basically say if someone sins, you go to them, right? That doesn't mean you won't be discouraged, but, you know, also look, yeah, I might be discouraged, but that person's soul might be in jeopardy. So go to them, but don't ever let that discouragement push you to the point where you think, well, I'm going to leave or I'm going to, because your faith should be in Jesus and that should be your sole focus. And so, you know, and that's the aspect I'm appealing to when I say go look at Third John. Yeah, agree. That, that that part of it, I is, agree. That's that's all right there. That's what that is. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, how do I approach someone to tell them about the gospel? And uh, we kind of discussed this in season one. We did an episode, maybe episode ten, on how to share Jesus in a coffee shop, and it wasn't just obviously the coffee shops. More about how to approach people. Um, I, I the thing I normally say is realize it might be awkward. Um, it's still at times, some situations for me aren't awkward. You know, when I, I'm just, it gets easier and easier over the years. So I don't feel awkward anymore talking about it. Yeah. There are times where it is, but my advice would be go where people are, coffee shops, where they're reading their Bible, read your Bible publicly. When I go to hotels, 
Sometimes, sometimes I'm just worn out. So I sit in my room and read or look over my lesson, but there's other times where I have more time, my lessons done, you know, and I'll just go sit down in like the breakfast area, even in the middle of the day and just read and people will come up and talk to me. I mean, I've had lots of experiences where I just sit somewhere publicly and just reading my Bible yeah. and other people see it and come we talk to We talked a lot about door knocking when Matt was on the podcast and, um, I mentioned on there that um, we used to do a little class with uh, Matt Jones when we were at the Edgewood Congregation in Columbus, Georgia. And we finished up one time. We just went over to the Winn-Dixie and intentionally went to invite people. That was the point of the class, how to become better at approaching people. Yeah. So we practiced it. We got up, we went to the store, we got some tracks. Yeah. And we went in and we said, hey, uh, you know, you know, I know this is different, but we just want to, we're out, we're inviting people over here. Uh, we'd love to study with you if you ever want to study or this and that. We just yeah. hit the streets is the point. Yeah. Like hit the streets. How do you approach someone to tell them about the gospel? You walk up to them and you say, Hey, I want to tell you about the gospel. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that is just it. There's different ways you can go about it. Well, but I think, yeah. you go about it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you approach them yeah. and you tell them about the gospel, whether you're at the coffee shop with your Bible open and they start the conversation or you walk over to the table and you start the conversation. Yeah. At the end of the day, you walk over and you talk to them about the gospel. That's how. Well, I mean, right? think about well, social. It's exactly right. How how do how does something go viral today? One person sees it and they what? And they share. They it. share they it because it. Yeah. they think this is so cool. I have to be the one that tells other people. Yeah. There, there's a big thing in America and I guess in the world and probably all time where people they want to be the one who knows and shares the information. A lot of times it becomes a problem because you have somebody that you tell something like, oh, I want to be the one to tell everybody. It's like, it's not your news to tell. Yeah, gossip. But, you know, think of a song that goes that goes viral or a video. What happens? One person sees it and they're like, oh, this is awesome. I have to tell everybody. So they share it or they text it to people. So your people are always going to be more excited to share something that they're excited about or they think this is great. So maybe you have, a, maybe you're just getting used to being evangelistic. Think about something your congregation has. It's really cool, right? So if it's, Hey, we've got a seminar on dinosaurs at Apologetics Press is coming into it. And Hey, I know that people at my work are going to think this is cool. Yeah. Find something you can kind of hype a little bit. That's right. It, that it sounds exciting to you and you can share that enthusiasm with others. That's exactly right. Yeah. So maybe it's a gospel meeting. Maybe it's, you know, Hey, we got Cliff Goodwin coming in and He's awesome. And I, you've got to come hear this guy. I mean, if someone comes up to me at a coffee shop and says, you should come to church with me on Sunday. It's like, okay, why should I come to church? And I mean, that's me. Like, why should I come to you your church? Be enthusiastic about Yeah. It? But if someone is like, have you heard of this? Have you, look, I see you reading your Bible. Do you know who this guy, do you know who Cliff Goodwin is? Yeah. And they're like, uh, no, like, you don't know who he, are you serious? Like he's coming to South Haven and he's going to be speaking at our church every night for the next three nights. Like, what are you doing on Monday? Well, I've got, okay, so you don't have any real plans. Like you're going to, you got it. If you don't hear this guy, you're going to regret it. Like, I mean, if someone said it to me, if, if someone said, cause I'm always trying to meet and, you know, reach people. And so let's say that I'm sitting at a coffee shop. Someone's like, Hey, have you heard of X and Y? I've never heard of him. Right. Denominational yeah. guy. And they're like, you got to come hear him Monday night. Right. That doesn't mean I'm going to go, but that it would be way more effective in trying to get me to go as yeah. opposed to them saying like, yeah, you should come Monday night. There's a guy preaching. Yeah. Like be, if you're be enthusiastic, if you're enthusiastic, right? if you come in and you're like, dude, have you seen that? Like, well, I'm trying to think of what happened just in the last couple of days. I was talking to somebody I'm like, have you seen this video? And they're like, no. And no, they said to me, they're like, have you seen this video? It was a funny video. And I'm like, no, they're like, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Like you've got to look it up right now. Right. Oh, I know what you mean. That is something I'm like, I guess I got to look it up. Yeah. So, so you can, you can be that enthusiastic. People are enthusiastic. Yeah. About, it's good. I like, yeah. I love your point. I yeah. mean, you're saying, how do you approach somebody talking about the gospel? Be enthusiastic. That's right. Excited. I wasn't even thinking about that part of it. That's and right. You'll, it'll be easier for you to go if you have something you think's worth sharing. Now, yeah. of course, what should be worth sharing? The fact that everyone's headed for hell because of sin and Jesus died on a cross. But sometimes we've heard that story so many times that we think like, oh, everybody knows it. It's, I mean, what? it's a great story. Have you seen that funny video of the guy where they're sitting in a living room and it's like, you know, when you watch a show, it's like spoiler alert, uh-huh. right? So it's a guy who's never heard the story of the gospel before. And that's what the video context is. And so they're telling him, they're like, okay, so tonight we're looking at Matthew, you know, 26 or 27. And, you know, this is the chapter where, you know, Jesus is going to die. And the guy's like, what? He, the guy's like, he, he dies? Spoiler alert. <laughs> and then they're, and then uh, the guy's like, well, yeah, but I mean, in the next chapter, he resurrects. And the guy's like, he resurrects? <laughs> like, it's yeah. the idea that yeah. the gospel is an exciting 
thrilling story. Yeah. But we hear it so many times that we're just like, yeah, he died. And then, yeah. he, you know, it was sad. And What he, does that word mean? Enthusiastic. I don't know. Are you going to tell me? E-N-T-H-E. What is it? Entheo. And it's pneuma something related to. It's like, it's related to I mean, God I, being in you, I think. It's a Greek word. Well, I'm going to look it up. I'm trying to re- reverse, you know, figure it out from the English, but that's definitely Greek. I don't see anything. Okay. Uh, I'll have to look that up. I well, could. Okay. Well, guarantee it has something to do with God being in you or something. Enthusiasm. Enthusi- uh, enthusiasm. Etymology. Origin. Mid 16th century. Late Latin. Inspiration or frenzy. From the Greek, enthusiamos. Yeah. Be inspired or possessed by God. There you go. So basically, you should act like you're possessed <laughs> by God. Yeah, sure. There you go. Not by the devil. That's true. So, what's the spirit of God look like when it's in you? Man, this message looks. This message is amazing. You know, it's yeah. enthusiastic. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, well, I, I could know. see. I was just, I was just thinking about that. I don't so know. Maybe obvious, that's not a point to make at all, but that was interesting. Okay. Y- anyway, what he's saying is, you should be excited about it. You should be enthusiastic, right? You should be like. I mean, possessed with excited yes, to tell yes. you about this information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. That's right. Let's go to the next one. That's really question. good for that one. Okay. All right. All right. If you have any questions about that, email us. We can clarify that's anything right. if we're confusing you. That's right. All right. So how do you approach somebody with the gospel? Be enthusiastic, enthusiastic, be excited, find something that you're excited about, and you will do a better job telling somebody about it. Right. Okay. Next question. Scott, how do you not get mad when oh, God... I think close. There we go. All right, come okay. here. How do you not get mad when God says no to a prayer that you pray because it's not the right time? So you pray a prayer and yeah. you it seems like the answer is no. Yeah, I think perspective. I'm okay. going to keep coming back to that. That's one of those key things that answers a lot of the questions that I hear all the time. Okay. It's perspective. How do I not get mad when God says no to a prayer because it's not the right time? I remember that God knows better than me. Yeah, that's correct. That's I don't know anything compared to him. And that's the way I end my prayers. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know how often you pay attention if I do public prayer around you a lot anymore, but I am. But, but you know, let the Lord let your will be done, not mine. Yeah. Whatever it is. If I'm asking him to help me with my health problems, and I have, yeah. I'm still going to end it that way. Because for some reason, it might be better in some providential way. I don't know. I'm yeah. not God yeah. that he does not do that for me. Yeah. He didn't take Paul's thorn in the flesh. Yeah. Maybe there's a reason I should have this. Yeah. I don't know. So end your prayers that way and be all right with it. Trust the fact that God knows best for you individually and he's not going to do something that's going to hurt you. Yeah. Not overall. He might hurt you like a parent hurts a kid when they get them a, an ouchie boo-boo at the doctor or something like that, right? Then yeah. you get blood drawn. That hurts, but you're not hurting the child. You're actually caring for the child. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's the attitude you should have. I that's think your how. attitude, I think it's perfect. I mean, yeah. I, it, it is perspective. And so while you were, I was listening, but... I was typing out some verses that come to my mind. So, okay. How do you not get mad perspective? You don't know what you're asking. Just last night uh, I had to speak and the lesson I did is the same one that we covered on um, the episode of give us a King. Somebody came up to me. They were like, now I will listen to the podcast. Did you? I'm like, yeah, the exact same lesson. They're like, Oh, I was like, yeah, like I'm double dip. Like if I write a lesson here, I'm going to use it in the podcast. I'm going to preach in a sermon. Okay. So anyway, but basically in that situation, they prayed for something and God sort of warned them, Hey, are you sure you want this? And they said, yes. And so God gave it to them. But yeah. in a lot of cases, here's some new Testament verses, right? So you don't know that God is saying no, he might be saying not yet. Right. He might be saying, no, I'm impressed. You can type while you're making eye contact with me. I don't know if oh, you can I can show type. I can listen and talk while I talk. I mean, I was good at typing. And That's good. Anyway. Well, I can tell. So, Sorry. okay. You, you pray a prayer and God says, no, well, number one, he might've said no. Uh, he may have said no for a good reason. First John five fourteen. This is the confidence that we have that we have in Him. If we ask anything, He hears us. But there's a little phrase in there. Right. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So maybe what you prayed for wasn't according to God's will. Maybe God says this is bad for you, right? Yeah. Where are you love? Where are you? I'll tell you in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> it's about so, my head. Okay. Um, James four three and four says this. You ask and do not receive. So maybe God did say no, but yeah. here's why. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Maybe you're praying for something. Maybe you're praying for God to bless you in some way, but it's not for a godly purpose. That's. I was thinking that when you started down this path, I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of young men and young women too. Yeah. And, you know, when I was single, I prayed for a godly spouse. 
And it'd be real easy for you to get fixated on somebody who might not actually be the person that you should yeah. be fixated on. Yeah. There might be something there that, that they need to work on in their life first before they're really yeah. qualified to be called somebody who's going to be good in that sense. Right. Yeah. So, and it may not be another person. It may be something else, maybe a job that you're praying for. Yeah. But that job may lead you down a bad path, even though on paper it looks good. Yeah. And you don't know. Yeah. Right? That's, and that's the thing is you don't know. So you might be praying for something <clears throat> that you're going to spend on your pleasures. And maybe you don't think you are. Maybe you've convinced yourself, no, this is good for me. But God says, no, I see through that. You're convincing yourself of something that's good that's bad for you. Mm -hmm. It says also, you may spend it on your pleasures. And then it says, adulterers and adulteresses. He says, do you not know friendship with the world is enmity with God? Yep. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of God and of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So in James 4, 3 and 4, 1, it says, you don't have because what? You ask because you want to spend it on your pleasures, right? Because you're asking for That's right. basically lustful or, 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 or covetous purposes. Correct. And in verse 2, the verse before that, James 4, 2, you lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. So sometimes you don't ask. Now, you might ask for the wrong thing and God you says You see no. the things that you want. You go about trying to get them all on your own mm -hmm. and you do it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Another reason that God might say no, or you might be, you might perceive he says no, because ultimately you don't know how God answered your prayer. Right. All, all we can do is sort of like play Monday morning quarterback and look back and say, well, was this God or what? But look at James chapter one, verse five. If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach and it will be given. Verse six, but let him ask in faith mm -hmm. with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Maybe you prayed for something and you didn't really believe God could do it. I have thought about this passage a lot. Definitely. This passage is something that sometimes comes on my mind every day Yeah, because I pray a lot. I yeah. mean, I say I pray a lot. There's probably people that pray way more It's relative. Than me, but, yeah. but I pray every day, multiple yeah. times a day, yeah. and not just when I eat, right? Yeah. Yeah. I do pray. Like I said before, perspective. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot. I, I think I'll probably put a lesson together on it sometime soon. Yeah. I mean, there are passages that talk about the way we should approach God, the attitude that we should yeah. have when we approach God, what we should approach God with and not with and stuff yeah. like that. There is actually a lot in the scriptures that talks about prayer, yeah. how to pray, what we should pray for, what the right yeah. attitude we have when we pray yeah. should be, you know. And so, yeah, this is a this is a great section. Perspective is important. Yeah. And I'm just rambling now. No, but I mean, I think to, to sort of wrap up the answer to the question, yeah. how do you not get mad when God says no to a prayer? Number one, you don't know that he said no. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know if if he said yes, but it's just not your timing. Yeah. I mean, you know, there have been a few instances in my life where God has, I believe, and I'll say I believe because I can't know for sure if it's, I mean, I mean, okay, Eric, our middle son. Basically, I prayed, we prayed for him and it felt like that at prayer was answered immediately. And I'm not going to tell more of the story for time's sake, but basically the, other than that, there are many times when I've asked for something and it's taken a while for it to happen. Yes. And so I'm like, eventually I believe that I believe that the prayer was answered. Yes. But I'm like, oh, wow, that wasn't on my time frame. There's also times where I prayed for something to work and it didn't work out. And then something else happens later. And I'm like, wow, thank you for not answering that prayer. Right. So many examples. So when God says no, number one, you don't know that he's saying no. He might say yes, but later he might say, he might say no, but it's for your, for your good. Right. He might say no. Cause you didn't actually believe God could do what you're praying for. He might say no. Cause it's against his will. And he might say no, because you asked for things that were, you know, basically to be spent on your pleasures. So there's just so many things. And all those things are summed up in what you said, which is perspective. Yeah. Understand God knows better than you understand that God is your father, Matthew six, eight, nine, and your father loves and cares for you. And Matthew 7, 7 through 11, talks about how God wants to give us good things. He's a good father. And it says, you know, if your son or daughter asks you for a piece of bread, you give him a rock? Obviously, no. And then it says, but you're evil compared to God. If you then being evil know how to give good, good, give good gifts to your children, how much more does your father in heaven know how to give good gifts right. to those who ask of him? So basically what he's saying is, look, God is a, your good father. He wants to give you good things. Therefore, if you receive something, if you pray for something and you don't get it, there's probably a good reason for it. And yeah. God is the one who knows that and you should trust him. Yeah. And if um, you trust God, then you can look back and say, hey, look, I prayed for this. I thought it was good for me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe God knows more than me. You know? Yeah. And there's another piece of the puzzle, I guess, there a little bit further down versus 
13 and 17 talks about not boasting about tomorrow. Just at least the one aspect I want to point out. Is yes, go ahead. If God wills, we shall do such That's and right. such. That's right. Yep. Right? Yep. So you approach it with the prayer and the understanding that it might not be in God's will. Yep. And then you can go about trying to do what you think you should be doing, but mm-hmm. recognize that, you know, sometimes that's not the way it's going to work out. You got to be willing to adjust. Absolutely. Because you're not in total control. Absolutely. You know, that's great. I think that's perfect. That's a good way to end. Let's go ahead and end. This is a little bit shorter episode, but that's okay. Um, thank you for hanging out with us on the Authentic Christian Podcast. If you have any questions that you see and you're like, you know, I'm not sure I agree with them, email us. Authentic Christian Podcast at gmail.com comes right to us. We're all for you. Don't have to agree with something just because we say it. We want you to agree with something because the scriptures say it. Yeah. And uh, so if there's something you hear us say you're not quite sure about, send us an email. We'd love to talk to you. And we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us and, and listen to us talk about the scriptures. So hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back on the next episode. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to and start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening.